you grew up in North Carolina. What was that like for you? Um, North Carolina nice. Um, grew up in Wilmington, North Carolina. It's uh, right by the beach, pretty much uh, beach and college town. Um, grew up in a poor, low, or I say low income family. Uh, that's pretty much just as how I grew up, I guess. And going through that, you know, growing up, usually sports is kind of the avenue to get away from that for a lot of people. What sports did you kind of gravitate towards growing up, and uh, what sports really did you start to play when you were younger? Um, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, I did um, just play a lot of sports growing up. I played basketball, uh, fought one of football. Funny enough, I actually was a cheerleader, which um, included like gymnastics, you know, uh, tossing girls up in the air and stuff like that. So I did that uh, mostly growing up. And I saw that you wrestled in college, but when did you start wrestling? When did you first get involved with that? I started playing up. I started wrestling my senior year in high school. My senior year in high school, I played football, I ran track, and I wrestled. Before that, I was doing just cheerleading, like just gymnastics, uh, football, and that stuff. And then um, I said to myself, me and, me and my friends said, um, our senior year, we're just going to play every sport that we can and just, you know, leave it all out there and leave all there in high school. So I ended up uh, trying out for the wrestling team. And I actually got really good at it and got some scholarship offers. And um, pretty much that's what got me into MMA my wrestling, uh, my son wrestling background from um, high school and then to college and still now. You may be the first MMA fighter that I've interviewed that has gone from cheerleading to the UFC. It's really yeah, nice seeing to all. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I have the first. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with being a cheerleader, though. It's a, a lost art. Guys are missing out if they're not cheering uh, in high school. That's, that was, a lot of people have the wrong perception of cheerleading. Like, I, was on, like, I wasn't like, uh, I was on a competitive squad. So uh, we did more of, like, like I said, gymnastics, a lot of tumbling and talking girls in the air. It was less. Uh, we didn't do like all the cheers and stuff like that. And then, like, it was an easy sell as a younger guy, you know, into girls, you know. Um, We'll go to camp and it'd be like 5,000 girls and pretty much like uh, 20 guys. So, I don't know, it was just it was a good time, you know? <laughs> so, like a little rock star at a young WA. No, definitely, definitely. Man, you don't got to sell me on that. That's, that's a smart move right there. Uh, with your tumbling and all that, which is crazy, is, does that flexibility really help you when you started wrestling and even now? I think the, the biggest thing coming from chilling and wrestling, why well, I picked it up so fast, um, in order to do tumbling, gymnastics, you have to, if you want to be good at it, if you're good at it, you're going to have to have a strong core. So uh, I came into wrestling with a really strong, strong core, so a lot of things were natural, and I was just able to scramble and move around and kind of like, I don't know, manipulate a lot of body movements that your typical guy wouldn't be able to do, even though they might be strong, they ain't so like, uh, flexible and able to move. Uh, as I was. You know, after you were done wrestling in college, what made you go to MMA? You said it was an easy transition, but what really opened your eyes to the sport? Um, funny enough, um, I graduated in 2007 with a bachelor's degree in criminal justice, and I was actually working for uh, about three years. I was working as an in-home therapist, slash like case worker, black mentor. Like I had pretty much three job titles, and. Um, all of a sudden, like, I was I was working out, you know, I don't know, I was working out a couple times a week along with it, and then I just kind of, like, me as an athlete, I got the urge to compete again. I was like, you know, I want to be competitive again. I want to do something where I can compete, you know? Because, I mean, it ain't no better feeling than actually competing, you know, and training for it and working hard for something. So, um, I started training. Um, I want, My first thing was wrestling. I was going to wrestle again. I was going to pursue, like, a Olympic career in wrestling. So I started uh, working out at this one gym, and they had a couple of amateur fighters there. And they're pretty much the only wrestling partners I could get, because they were former college wrestlers who turned MMA, but they were all amateur fighters. And, you know, so they, like I said, they were my, my only partners. So they wanted to grapple, I went to wrestle. So I was a better wrestler, so I take them down. And they're like, nah, man, like, you know, you're taking us down. Let's keep ball. Let's keep, let's grapple. Let's, you know, let's work on submission instead of, you know, just working on takedown. So I'm like, all right, cool. So then, you know, I just started picking the grappling part up, you know, with submission and stuff, and they were like, you should fight. I was like, nah, I think I'm good. And I was like, you know what? One day it just kind of clicked and started doing boxing, you know, kickboxing, 
we started working on my jiu-jitsu, and then it just all came together. And uh, I think I took a fight like two months after the amateur fight. Then I took uh, another amateur fight a month after that, and then I think two months after that I went pro. And yeah, you know, that's how it started. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, that's dope. When did you know that you were good enough to turn it into a career and kind of when you wanted to go pro? When did you know that this is something that you wanted to do at the highest level? Honestly, not being cocky or but like I said, I have a lot of belief in myself in anything I do. Just, you know, anything I jump into, any, any avenue I go into, I believe in myself. Like, I believe in myself. You know, I believe in myself. And I'm like, I'm really competitive. I don't like losing. So, um, the first thing when I started, when I, when I said, okay, I'm going to step my dick into, uh, Fighting, I was like, okay, you know, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to be champion. Even when I was amateur, you know, like, it, it's far fetched, you know, at that point. And, you know, saying, hey, I'm going to fight in the UFC is very far fetched because not a lot of guys fight in the UFC compared to the amount of guys fighting, you know. So uh, it was definitely a far fetched uh, dream, but a uh, goal. But, you know, I set high goals and, you know, kind of worked towards it. You started off nine and zero professionally. What was that like for you? Just seeing that success so fast and uh, seeing what you could really do. What did that do for you? Um. Yeah. I mean, definitely you get confidence along the way, and like I said, I'm a fun believer of hard work. You know, so um, I, I just try to work really hard, and then I know if, as long as I work hard, then I'm gonna get results. You know, the results gonna be good. It might not be as fast as I want it, but, you know, I'm going to let you get there and do a lot of work, so that's what I always thought uh, of myself for. And only being four years pretty much into the sport right now, do you feel that you're still kind of on the incline? Like, have you reached your peak, or are you getting there? Obviously, you haven't reached it. Uh, or do you feel like you're coming into your prime, or is there still so much more that you can learn and do? Oh, so much more. I mean, I'm, 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 like, I'm, not, I'm not, like, bragging on myself, but I'm, I'm really good right now. You know, I'm one of the, I don't know, obviously I'm top, top 15 in the world right now, you know, um, but I'm growing. I'm learning everything. I'm learning things new, new every day. You know, I'm getting better techniques. I'm learning how to relax, learning how to breathe, you know, learning how to get more cardio, learning how to push my body, learning how to push my mind. So, I mean, I mean, I'm still, I'm still early in my career, you know, I figure I have, I don't know, Bernard Hopkins, that's boxing, but, uh, He's, what, 49, I believe, and he's still fighting at a high level, and he's, like, number two guy in the world. So, I mean, I, I, I figured in the end of the probably, I, I don't know, seven more years, you know, and, and out of 100%, 100% is my top. I'm going to be, I figure, I'm pretty operative, but, you know, I don't know, 25, 30% right now. And, you know, once, like I said, you good enough to be to be top 15, but I'm growing every day, and when I actually start, you know, reaching more of my potential or, you know, getting more comfortable in the sport and picking up more techniques, you know, you're one of the most versatile fighters that we've seen as of late. You can submit guys, you can take them down and wrestle them and win that way by decision. You can knock people out. Where did you really pick up all of these skills and what made you that versatile type of fighter? I think, it's, I think you got some guys that don't train. You got some guys really good wrestling, some guys really good kickboxing. They train their discipline, they're good at I'll say seventy percent of the time, and then it's kind of like they'll train everything else, but I ain't really focused. My thing is, I'm trying to make my strength my strength. I'm trying to keep my make my strength. I'm trying to keep my strength, and my weaknesses. I'm trying to bring it up to my strength. So that I means I'm putting equal amount of time in everything. And just kind of really trying to ignore and uh, really study the sport in my own time being in fights that were canceled due to injury, whether it's your own or crazy accidents. You've had like one of the most up and down UFC careers to start off with that I've seen. Um, what has that inconsistency done to you in your training? And it really hasn't affected you in the cage, but what does it affect kind of on the day-to-day in your preparation for these fights? It's tough because you know, because I admit, teaching, getting ready for a fight and teaching is, is, is like the biggest thing, you know? Like you don't want to you don't want to spar too much. You don't want to go too hard too soon because you're breaking your body down. And it's not like other sports you have off season. It would mean you, you go year in, year out. You know, you got to be ready to drop it down just in case somebody get injured. And it's a good opportunity for you to fill in. So like I say, you know, you're pushing your body for the max 24-7. So you got to kind of pick and choose and be smart, you know, when you got to tone it down a little bit. Especially let's say a fight get canceled or let's say uh opponent get injured. Now you got to be like, okay, well, uh, when am I going to fight again? How do I start my camp back up? You know, do I cut back on the cardio? Because when you do, when you train for a fight the last month, 
you're supposed to be you're supposed to be putting your body through a lot of like um uh, physical exercise that really really turn it up and everything. Like everything should be like if, if you're running if you're running your thing and you're running three miles, you should be running six miles. And six miles is gonna put more wear and tear on your body. So by the time you get to your fight, you're gonna be ready to go. But you can't be doing that um let's say six months out of a year, you know, like a marathon runner. You can't run like a marathon every month. Like it's just your body just isn't gonna hold up. You know, you gotta plan and you gotta uh plan your training accordingly. Definitely. And then you have this next fight coming up that was scheduled for UFC one seventy six and now that gets postponed and uh you're fighting now kind of a month later. Has that affected your training coming into this fight or uh what what really did it affect for you, if anything? I think the biggest thing was the, the thing that I was most bad my daughters, uh I have two daughters. They don't live in the city I live. They live like an hour and fifteen minutes away. So uh with my training schedule, I get them every other weekend in the summers. I get them for one to two weeks, two weeks at a time, and like spring break and holiday and stuff like that. That's what I get them the most. So it's obviously the summertime, so I plan on fighting August the second. You know, I'm going to have my daughters for like two to three weeks before they go back to school. We're just going to take a trip or something like that. Now, you know, now I'm back. I'm stuck in a situation where I have to train, 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 and focus on winning this fight because, you know, career is like, you know, that's going to open up a lot of things for their future and, you know, stuff like that. So now it's more like the party opposed to, you know, go ahead and fight on the second. You have the rest of the summer to relax and hang out with, you know, the kids or whatever. So that was, that was, that was pretty much the thing that had me bummed the most, you know. I was, like, I was a little upset a couple of days. But at the end of the day, life is about making sacrifices and, you know, learning everything will always go your way. But you still got to find a way to kind of, like, you know, keep your motivation and uh, keep moving forward. Definitely. And coming into this fight, uh, where do you see yourself having an advantage? You guys are both really good fighters, have really good early careers, were undefeated for a long time. And then, you know, you kind of hit the UFC running. Um, You've had pretty much dominant rounds in the UFC besides one, and that was your last fight towards the end. But every other time, you really had no transition. He's kind of struggled coming into the UFC what do you see that gives you an advantage coming into this fight? Um, I just, I'm, like I said, I'm a, I'm a really slow grappler. You know, I got to say, you know, my grappler by, you know, one of the top two guys, three guys, in a little way, you know, grappling, like, pretty much just the whole grappling thing. You know, my striking is coming along really good. You know, the cardio is real good. You know, I got to sure up a couple of things on the nutrition. But, um, yeah, I think it's an important fight for both of us. You know, obviously, like I said, Larkin, Went undefeated for a long time. He had a little rough spell. Uh, I watched all of his fights, and uh, none of his fights he really got, you know, destroyed. His last fight, he got caught, you know, which, you know, it's MMA, so anybody can get caught at any time. So I really don't take too much from that fight if I get caught, you know, I caught early. But uh, his other two fights he had against top guys, and I think he lost, but they were split decisions, you know, and he struggled with the grappling. So, um, this fight is important for both of us, you know. Like I said, uh, I started off strong, two and zero. You know, last one was a little rough. Uh, Larkin came in um, highly heralded. Um, he started out rough, so um, good fight for both of us, and um, both one that needed to pick up. So, looking at the division, uh, you see the champion Chris Weidman. You see him get pushed by Leoto last month, or earlier this month, a couple weeks ago. Uh, and you look at the rest of the division, it's so wide open. Where do you see yourself fitting in there? What are your goals in this division right now? Yeah, funny enough, I kick myself every day uh, about the last fight. You know, I had to fight in the bag, you know. And uh, a couple a couple of things that I didn't do right before the fight with my nutrition, you know, caused me in the last round to be so exhausted. But, like I said, I, I picked that fight up. I'm green on the UFC um, in the top ten for sure. And, you know... I'm working towards working for a title and getting a fight with Wyatt. So, you know, I probably say two more fights, then I'll be looking at that. But now it's kind of like back to the drawing board. And like you said, the division is wide open. But um, like I said, the striking is coming along every day. I definitely got power. Early in my career, I had a lot of knockouts. So we get more comfortable in the UFC. The competition is tougher. And just, you know, looking forward to um, getting more finishes and just making a name and working towards that title again.